Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Finca. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full three-player game today. Now, before I jump into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel, then please go to patreon.com slash John Gets Games. The uh, supporters of this channel are actually directly supporting this video. Uh, the contributing producers uh, selected and voted on this one for the bonus video for the month. Uh, now, you gain access to other exclusive perks like my opinions episodes where I talk at length about all of the games that I'm playing lately, and you also get to watch some videos early and advertisement-free like this one here. The last thing I'd like to ask is if while you are watching this, you see a turn where you think we should have done something differently, or if some aspect of the game really jumps out to you as interesting, then please comment about that down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I am showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. I also want to briefly mention that today I am filming with the 2009 version of the game. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. In it, each player is a Majorcan farmer over here on the island of Majorca. Now, in this game, players are going to be moving their farmers around this windmill, and on each turn, you are either going to move a farmer to gain fruit, or you are going to use a special power, or you are going to cash in fruit back to the supply in order to satisfy the needs of community tiles. In order to satisfy those needs, you do need a donkey cart to actually carry those fruit over, and you gain these donkey carts as you move around the windmill. Now, the main part of this game really is the windmill over here. Whenever you move a farmer, you'll first count the number of farmers on that windmill spot. You then move the farmer that exact amount clockwise around, and then you gain fruit equal to the type of the spot where you land, and the number of fruit that you get matches the number of farmers that are now on that tile. So in this example, we would land over here and get two figs. Now, every time a player completes a delivery to one of these tiles, we will then reveal the next one on that stack. Every single stack has four tiles in it, and once the fourth tile is removed from an area, you immediately give this Finca tile to the player, who has the most of that type of icon, on the tiles that they have already claimed. Once you do that, you then put a Finca tile onto that spot to show that that region is done, and once we've placed all of these Fincas, the game will immediately end, and then we will score points for the tiles that we have taken, as well as these bonus tiles, which you get for getting sets of one through six value tiles. Uh, you also get points for the bonus tokens that you haven't used, as well as any Finca tiles that you've grabbed. After that, the player with the most points will be the winner. Now, this was a very high-level overview of the game, and I will go through all of this in detail while we are playing. And on that note, let's now start the game. Now, we are going to play as the yellow player today, and we are the starting player, so let's now take the first turn of the game. As I briefly mentioned during the overview, on a player's turn, they must select one out of three different actions. Now, the first action involves moving farmers around the windmill to gain fruit. The second option involves spending the fruit that you have in order to satisfy these tiles out here on the board, and the third option involves using one of these special bonus tiles that we each have one of. Now, you can only do this four times a game because whenever you use these, they are permanently removed, and I'll explain how these work in more detail later on. Now, as you can see, all players began the game with four fruit, and we actually gained these during setup where we put these farmers out here, but again, I took care of all of that before we started this tutorial. For our turn, I think let's move a farmer over here on the windmill. And with that in mind, let's focus in a little bit more. The first thing I'd like to point out over here is the fact that the windmill is made up of these tiles, and during setup, you randomly put them out here, so you'll have a different pattern of these tiles each time you play. Now, within the game, these tiles never move, and there are exactly two tiles for each of the game's six different types of resources. Now, as you can see, every player has four farmers out here on the windmill, and they will never leave the windmill. They'll simply go round and around until the game is over. Now, I did say I would like to move a farmer, so that means we have to select one of our four farmers, and I think let's move this one right here. Now, before we actually move it, the first thing that we have to do is count the number of farmers on the spot where the selected farmer is. In this case, that is three farmers, so that means we must move this selected farmer exactly three times clockwise around the windmill. In that case, we go one, two, three, and then wherever we land, we will gain resources that match the type where we landed, and the number that we get equals the number of farmers that are now over here. In this case, there are two farmers. It doesn't matter that this is not our farmer, and this is the fig spot. So by moving over there, we can now gain two figs from the supply. 
we can add those to the other resources that we have. And I do want to point out that the number of resources in the supply is limited. We have a variable number of tokens over here depending on the player count. In a three player game, we have 14 of each of the six different resources. Now, if you ever go to take resources and there aren't enough for the entire amount, then before you take anything, everyone is going to take all of that resource that they have stored in front of them and they put them back into the supply. And then you'll take the full amount based off of whatever action you did to take those resources. So this means means it's not a great idea to hoard a bunch of singular resources because somebody might get more than there are available and then you'll lose all of that hard work. So it makes a lot of sense to get resources and then spend them and then get them and spend them. But sometimes it does make sense to save up and it's likely we'll see some of that as the game goes on. Now let's focus back over here, because in addition to gaining fruit, we are also going to gain a donkey cart. As you can see, there are two donkey cart symbols, and those are associated with these lines going like this. Now every time you move one of your farmers around the windmill such that it crosses one of these two lines, you will then take a donkey and put it in your area. Now there is a set number of donkeys in the supply, and again, this varies with the player count. And if you ever go to take a donkey from the supply, then just like the resources, everyone will have to give up all of the donkeys they have in front of them, and then you will take one from that resupply. Once again, we moved from here there, so we did cross that line, and that means we will gain this donkey in addition to the two figs we already grabbed. We can place this over here, and donkeys are crucial for actually delivering our fruit over to these different villages, and I'll explain how that works in detail later on. Now at this point, our turn is done, so we can move clockwise to the next player, and that is blue down here. They've decided to move a farmer, and they'll do this one. There are two farmers there, so they will move twice, and when they land on this grape spot, there are three farmers there, so blue is going to gain three grapes from the supply. After that, the red player can go. And they've decided to take advantage of the fact that blue put their farmer over here. Red is going to move this farmer. There are three farmers on that spot, so they will go one, two, three. And then they will gain three figs from this location in addition to a donkey cart. Three figs is certainly decent, and there's still quite a few of them left in the supply. All right, it's time for us to go again. And I think instead of gaining more fruits with a farmer, let's do a delivery action. So let's focus in over here, and in order to deliver fruit, we must have at least one donkey cart. Now we are going to use this donkey cart and put it back into the supply, and then each of these donkey carts can carry up to six fruits, and we can use these fruits to satisfy multiple tiles that are face up over on the board. Now, as you can see, these tiles show varying types of fruit. This is one grape, that is three oranges, that one over there is six of the same type. As you can see, those are question marks, so you can choose any type, but then you have to have six of them. Same with this one, that is four of the same type, and some also have a combination. This one right here requires two lemons and two figs, and you must have the exact amount of resources to match up with each of these tiles. So once again, we can deliver up to six worth of resources. And when we look out here, there is a two fig and we have two figs. There is also a two orange and we have two oranges. And there is also a two grape. Now that is great. Out here with these tiles, there are six or seven of each number. And I say six or seven because you always have two tiles that you put back into the box that you do not look at that are not in play. Either way, I think this is a great start. We've actually spent all of our fruit. We can now put our donkey back into the supply. Then all of the fruit that we used will also go back into the supply. And then we simply gain these tiles. Now, every tile is worth its number of points at the end of the game. So we just gained six victory points by taking these three tiles. After we are done with this delivery action, we then flip up the face down tiles on each of these stacks. This one wants five of one type of fruit. This one right here wants three lemons and two oranges, and this one wants three olives. Next up, we can place these in front of us. Now it's important to keep these face up, and it's also important to split them up because one of the things we're trying to do is gain sets of these tiles. Again, there are tiles that go one, two, three, four, five, and six, and every time a player has tiles where they have at least one of each of those, they will take the top one of these bonus tokens. As you can see, it shows one through six on it. The top one is worth seven points, the next one is six, then five, and then four. And every time you make a complete set of one through six tiles in front of you, you gain the top tile. So it's possible one player could take multiple of these tiles. And by grabbing three of these twos right off of the bat, we certainly made it harder for our opponents to make these sets because there are only three or four more twos in all of these stacks. And you need one of each number in order to gain these bonuses. 
That being said, we didn't really help ourselves getting close to a bonus by getting three of the same number. Uh, we could have potentially done things differently and gained a one value tile instead of a two, but I like the idea of spending all of our resources. Either way, that has finished our turn, so now the blue player can go. And they've decided to move this farmer, which will go just one spot because there's only one farmer there, and then when they land here, they will get three more grapes. They already had three grapes, so that means they have six of that type right now, and there is a have six of a kind out here on the board. Remember, each of these donkeys can only deliver up to six, so that would be one full delivery, but it is also worth six points, so it's likely that is something Blue is keeping in mind. Now one thing they haven't done so far is cross over a donkey cart line, so they still don't have one of those in front of them in order to make a delivery. Well, they're done with their turn, so now Red can go. And they've decided to move this farmer. They will move two times, and now there are four farmers over here on that fig spot. This means red is going to take four figs from the supply, and they now have seven figs total. Also, there aren't that many figs left in the supply. There are just six, and if somebody could land on the spot, in fact, somebody could, that's one, two, three away, that would use five of them. So, as you can see, as players start to clump up on these spots, the resources in the supply can disappear quite quickly. That is certainly a risk the red player is taking, but again, there are six in the supply, and one landing here would just take five, so they think they're probably going to be fine until their next turn. It looks like they are probably also angling to take this six of a kind, and red does actually have a donkey cart right now. Actually, technically, they have two donkey carts, because that farmer crossed the line, so they can put this in front of themselves, and every time you make a delivery, you use exactly one donkey cart in front of you. Well, red is done, which means we can go, and we have no fruits in front of us, so we should certainly gain some. Now, if we wanted to, we could gain five figs. We could move this farmer one, two, three spaces, and if we did that, there would be just one fig left in the supply. Now, that seems pretty risky. Obviously, if anyone else goes to take figs and they need more than one, then we will all lose those figs, and the blue player is pretty incentivized to make that happen. Um, they like the idea of denying the red player the ability to spend these to gain the six of a kind, uh, but when we look back out here, the only two fig spots happen to be right next to each other. Now, none of these farmers could land onto the next fig spot, because obviously they'd have to go one, two, three, four, five spaces forward. And over here, this farmer just goes one, and those farmers only move twice. So it looks like it's not possible for the blue player on their turn to actually take figs unless they used one of their special ability tiles. I mentioned before that on your turn you can either move a farmer to gain fruits, or you can deliver, or you could use one of these tiles, and let's now talk about them. Now this one right up here lets you do a delivery where you have to spend a donkey cart like normal, but you get a one fruit discount when you do that. That means you don't have to pay for one of the fruits that shows up on a tile that you take, and this also does not count against your donkey. That means you could use this and a donkey in order to deliver seven goods instead of the normal six. The next option is this, which is essentially the Mega Donkey. <laughs> you use them instead of a normal donkey, and then you can do a delivery of up to 10 fruit. After that, there is this one, which is the Gust of Wind. This lets you pick up one of your farmers from the windmill and place them down onto any windmill spot, and then gain the resources like normal, but you do not gain any donkeys with this movement. And finally, this one lets you do two farmer movements in a row. You can either move the same farmer twice, or you can move two farmers once and gain resources with each of those. Now, at the end of the game, every single one of these tiles that you did not use is worth two points. So if you decide to use one of these, you are denied denying yourself two points, but usually when you do that, you think that the benefit is going to outweigh the cost. Now, currently, it's our turn, and we are thinking about if we should do this, and when we consider what the blue player could do, they could do a gust of wind in order to send one of their farmers to a fig spot to gain figs and then force us all to lose them, and they could also instead do this double move because they could move this farmer twice and then again, and that would get them six figs. Now, not only would that be terrible for everyone else because we'd have to lose all of our figs, but then the blue player would get six figs in front of themselves, which they could then use. So obviously that is very strong, and I think because of that, let's not give the blue player that option. Let's not do this move and take all of these figs. I think the odds are too good that if we did that, the blue player would then force everyone to lose their figs, which is obviously way worse for us and red. So we're not going to move this farmer, but we do still have the other three that we can consider. This one would move once and get us an olive. This one would move once and get us an almond. And this one would move four times. That would be one, two, three, four, and that would get us one olive as well as one donkey cart. I do like the idea of getting another donkey cart, but another thing that we have to consider is what the blue player will do based off of what we do. If we go over here, then it's certainly likely the blue player would move one of these 
onto the spot. They would get four figs, which would not be enough to actually force the red player to lose them, but the blue player would still be pretty happy to have those four figs in front of themselves for doing other things. Um, now, if we did something else, like move this one here, that doesn't really change anybody else's metrics, but of course we don't get the donkey card. And then going on to this spot could be kind of interesting. Getting one almond is not bad, and then on our next turn, we could go there and potentially get a bunch of figs. At that time, I think it's likely the red player will have spent some figs, so the risk of having all of those figs would be a lot less. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So that was a single move, and we will just gain one almond. So obviously that's not a super powerful move, but I'm hoping that we are setting ourselves up for a decent next turn in order to get a whole bunch of fruit. A lot of this game is setting yourself up for your following turns, although, of course, the actions that your opponents take will definitely alter what you can actually do on your turn. Well, we are done, so now blue can go, and yeah, they can't turn this down. They are going to move three times over here. There are five farmers on this fig spot, so that means blue will gain five figs from the supply. As you can see, that's not quite enough to force the red player to lose theirs, but blue is essentially hoping that red will spend their figs, which would obviously put a lot less pressure on the overall system. Although, with us being right there, and potentially going on to that spot on our next turn to gain six, there's still going to be not that many figs out here. Either way, blue still thinks this is a decent enough idea, and part of that is certainly because that is going to gain them their first donkey cart of the game. Well, blue is done, so that means red can take their turn and they want to get out of the fig business. This is really worrying them. They do not want to lose theirs. So they are going to deliver, and they've decided to go for this six of a kind. Again, this has to be six of the exact same kind, but it can be any of the types. They are going to spend six of their figs. They also have to put a donkey cart back into the supply, and then after that, we can flip this over. Oh, <laughs> and it's another six. This is the other type. This requires one of each of the six different types of goods. Well, red is done, so that means we can go, and we can indeed get a bunch of figs if we want. Specifically, that would be six figs. Looking at the supply, that would only put one fig left in it, but I think that's probably worth it, considering blue is very likely to spend a bunch of figs on their turn. So I think let's risk it. We will move this farmer forward <laughs> onto a very popular tile, and then take six figs from the supply. That's finished our turn, so now blue can go. And they've decided to make a delivery, but they're not actually going to use their donkey. Instead, they're going to use their Max 10 Super Donkey. Remember, this uh, would give them two points at the end of the game if they didn't use it, but they think now it's a good time. So this means they can deliver up to 10 goods instead of the normal six. And they've decided to do these two right here, as well as this one. As you can see, that's five plus four plus one, which gets them to 10. And they are going to spend five of their figs for the bottom one. Then they will spend four of their grapes for this one. And then one more grape for that one right there. So they were able to liquidate a whole bunch of their goods. And that also got them 10 points. Also, this got them one half towards one of these bonuses. They just need a two, a three, and a six in order to actually complete this. Sixes can be a little hard to come by, but as you can see, they actually have one of every type except for lemons already in front of them. So on their next turn, they could just take this one if they used this with that discount, and who knows, maybe they'll consider it. Either way, for this turn, they can put those in front of themselves, and then we can reveal three new tiles. This wants three lemons, this one wants six of a kind again, and then that one wants three almonds. Well, blue is done with their turn, but before we go into red's turn, I think now is a good time to talk about these Finca tiles that are on the board. During setup, we randomly put each one of these out into different areas, and as you can see, they show a five number, and then they either show one icon, or they might show two icons, like this one right over here. Now, these are five-point rewards that are given out to players, and specifically, they are given out the moment the associated region has its final tile removed from that region. For example, once all of them are gone from this region, we will immediately award this to the player who has the most almonds within all of their claimed tiles. Now, this does not count for the question marks. We can see right now, this isn't a great example because obviously no one has any almonds, but I suppose if we did a different example like this one over here, then that would give five points at the end of the game to the player with the most grapes. Looking out here, we have two grapes. The blue player has one, so if it was like this when that final tile was taken, we would get to take this, and again, that's worth five points to us at the end of the game. 
The tiles that show multiple goods on them simply have you add those up. So if this one was to go right now, we would have two grapes and two oranges. So we have four going towards that. And then the blue player has just one. So we are well positioned for this one as well. Now, if there was a tie for having the most when one of these is given out, then instead we just put this token into the box and nobody actually gets it. Now, the moment one of these tokens is taken from the board, we then take a Finca token and we put it into that area. This shows that that region of the board is completely done for the rest of the game, and we have a certain number of these based off of the player count. In a three-player game, there are five of these, and the game ends immediately at the end of any player's turn when the fifth one of these Finca tiles has been placed. At that moment, we will then move into final scoring, and I figure let's talk about how that works now as well. Now, in final scoring, we are going to gain points for all of the tiles that we have taken. Every one of these tiles will be worth points equal to the number. So right now, if the game was to be over, we have six points in these tiles. We also get five points for every one of these Finca bonus tiles we have, so that would be another five. In addition to that, we also get two points for every one of these bonus tokens we did not use throughout the game. So that is eight points if you don't use any of them throughout the game. Obviously, the blue player is already down to six because they have used one. And then lastly, if you gain one or more of these bonuses, you simply get points equal to the value in the middle, which is seven, six, five, or four. At that point, the player with the most points is the winner, and if there's a tie, then the tied player who has the most leftover fruits will break the tie in their favor, and if there's still a tie, then the tied players share in the victory. Now, at this point, I think I've taught essentially all of the rules to the game, and let's now jump back into it. Obviously, this is out here, we don't have this, and the red player can now take their turn. After considering their options, they are going to move on the windmill. And specifically, they will move this farmer here. There are six farmers on this spot, so that means they will move one, two, three, four, five, six times. And then over here, they are going to gain two lemons. And they also crossed a donkey line, so they gain a new donkey card. After that, they are done with their turn. Well, at this point, it looks like it's our turn. Currently, we have six figs, and there is a six-of-a-kind tile out here. Also, as I said, we are currently winning for this tile, although just barely compared to our opponents. But still, trying to get through this stack earlier rather than later might be in our best interest. Now, the unfortunate thing is that we don't have a donkey cart. We could use our max 10, but again, this is worth two points at the end of the game, so that really only makes sense to do if you do a full load of 10, and we don't have that. So I think we should probably focus on just getting a donkey cart this turn. And considering we have one almond and there is a three almond tile out here, I figure getting one almond isn't bad. So we will take that. We haven't quite got there, but we're working towards it. Uh, we can also see there is a three almond and two grape one over there. And this one wants an almond. Either way, I think that's okay. It does the primary thing that we wanted to, though, in getting us one donkey cart. Of course, we could have moved one of these. They would go one, two, three, four, five. That would have given us another grape and a donkey cart, but I don't know. This felt like a slightly better move to me right now. All right, we are done, so blue can go. And they've decided to move this farmer. There were five there, so they go one, two, three, four, five. That will get them a donkey cart, and it will also get them one grape. And it's worth noting, there's just one donkey cart left in the supply. Remember, if you go to take a donkey cart and there aren't any there, then everyone puts theirs back into the supply, and then you do get that donkey cart. So it can be a bad idea to hoard donkey carts, just like it can be a bad idea to hoard goods. Their turn is done, so now red can go. And they've decided to move this farmer, going two spaces, and that will get them one olive. Now they have one of every single type, so it's possible they are gunning for this over here. But either way, their turn is now done, so that means we can go. Now, I think we should probably just get rid of all of these figs. We have a donkey cart, and we have the figs for it, so I think let's do it. That donkey cart can deliver up to six, so we can take this six of a kind. We'll put all of these back into the supply, and now we are slowly working towards a set, and then the final thing we do is flip this over. It's the final one in that region, surprisingly enough, and it wants two almonds and three olives. We are done, so now the blue player can go, and they can see that the red player can simply take this on their next turn. The blue player really would like to work towards a set. They currently have a 1, a 4, and a 5, and they can also tell that many 6s have already shown up. It might be a while until another 6 happens, and they are really considering using their minus 1 tile in order to actually make this delivery right now to take this before the red player can. After really thinking it through, Blue has decided they are not going to use this. If they had a way to do a 7 delivery also using this discount, I think they probably would, but they are not in a position for that. They would simply take that 6, 
So they are going to let the red player take it, and they'll just hope to see another six. We have seen three of them, and there are up to seven of them out here, so it's very likely we'll see at least one more before the game is over. Instead of doing that, blue has decided that they would like to take two lemons. That's finished their turn, so now red can go. And I don't think anyone is surprised to see them make a delivery. They will use this donkey cart and then send back one of every single type in order to take this tile right here. After that, the next tile in the stack is a four-pointer. It needs two oranges and two grapes. Well, red is done, so now we can go. We currently have just two almonds in front of us, so I think we should probably gain some goods. When we focus in, this farmer could get us two olives. This one would get us five figs if we wanted that. Uh, and then these two would both go one, two, three, four. So that would be a donkey cart and one olive. Currently, we don't have any donkey carts, so getting one is not a bad idea. And when we look out here, I'm not super sure we really need five figs. Uh, this one right here wants two of them, but uh, considering how many figs have already been spent, it's not too surprising to see that overall the island is a little bit over figs for the moment. Another thing to consider is if we do go there, then on our next turn, if we want to gain goods, we will have even less options because three out of our four farmers would be on that specific spot. So part of me feels like this is probably just a better thing to do. It gets us two olives. When we look around, this needs olives. So does that. I guess that's just two locations, though. But that being said, we have these two almonds, and this wants two almonds and three olives. So getting two out of those three is not a bad idea, especially considering, again, we are kind of trying to work through this stack as quickly as possible so that we could gain this bonus before other players actually cash in for tiles that use grapes. There are a couple of those out there, so yeah, let's go with this plan. That will get us two olives. And who knows, maybe on our next turn, we'll go over here and get a bunch of figs. Uh, it's possible there might be new tiles that will change our incentives. We are done, so blue can go. After considering their options, they are going to move this farmer. They will go twice and then land on this olive spot, which is going to get them three olives. After that, the red player can go. And over here, they've decided to move this farmer. They're happy blue went over there because now they could go three spaces, which was going to get them a donkey cart, and it will also get them two almonds. It appears there are still a bunch of almonds over here in the supply. Well, it's time for us to go again, and we can't get a bunch of figs this turn because the red player went onto this spot. If we moved this farmer, we would get one fig, and these two would get us a single olive, Whereas this one would get us a donkey cart and an orange. So honestly, not great prospects. Getting a donkey cart is not a bad thing, though, I suppose. If we did that, then on our next turn, we could maybe move here and get multiple almonds. It kind of depends if red is still there on our next turn. I think I like that idea better than the other ones. So yeah, we will go two spaces. We will take our only donkey cart for the moment, and then just a single orange. After that, the blue player can go, and they have so many goods in front of them, but it looks like they're going to get more. <laughs> they're going to move uh, this farmer one space. That is going to take the final donkey cart from the supply. Uh, this means if anyone uh, crosses one of these lines before someone makes a delivery, then all donkey carts will go back. In addition to that, blue will gain two oranges, and blue has three donkey carts in front of them. We have one, and red has two. So blue has the most to lose by losing these donkey carts, but they still felt like this was a risk they were willing to take. If they do lose these donkey carts, they figure it's not the end of the world overall. They'll just get some more fruit. <laughs> they have so many in front of them, though. This means red can go, and they are going to take a donkey. They will move this farmer right here, there are two farmers, so they move two spaces. That is going to get them one grape. And then when they go to take a donkey, there aren't any. So every single donkey token is going to be taken. Red did have a couple of them, but they figure they're not super close to actually cashing out these goods. And they can tell blue certainly is. So they figure they may as well make life a little bit harder for everyone, essentially. After that, red is done with their turn. So now we get to go. And I think we should once again gain some goods. And it looks like our farmers are really clustered over here on the windmill. It looks like our options are a single olive and a donkey cart, or a fig, or five figs. Honestly, I think the donkey cart's probably better. <laughs> uh, we really don't need five figs. We don't have any lemons to even match up with a couple of figs down here. So yeah, let's go one, two, three, four. That will get us one donkey cart and a single olive. 
looking around. Actually, that was totally good. Uh, that gives us the three olives we need for this. We already have the two almonds, and we do have one orange, so we could technically do a five plus one or six delivery on our next turn. So yeah, that was actually a great move for us. Well, we are done, so blue now can go, and they have so much fruit in front of them. Their number one priority is getting a donkey cart, I think. And it looks like there's really only one way they can do this. That farmer won't cross the line, that one won't cross the line, and this one also just barely won't cross the line. Getting two almonds is somewhat nice, though. But yeah, they've decided two olives is better, mostly because it comes with a donkey cart. The red player now gets to go. And they've decided to move here. That will simply give them two lemons. After that, it's our turn. And yeah, let's use our donkey cart. Uh, we have six fruit, and we have a way to use all six of it. So it looks like we aren't really doing the horde strategy so far. We've been pretty efficient with our actions, I like to think. So we can spend this donkey, which lets us deliver up to six. We are going to deliver to this with the two almond and then the three olives. And then we will also deliver to this with our one orange. Now, as soon as we do that, we can put these into our area. We don't have a full set so far, but we do have four out of six for this. It looks like we really want a three and a four. The next thing we do is replenish. This wants five of one specific type. And then finally, we have an empty area. I talked about this one during the teach earlier on. Uh, what we have to do is check to see who has the most grape icons within all of their tiles. We have two compared to the one of each of our opponents. So our gambit to try and get through this stack as quickly as possible before anyone gained this tile or this tile ended up being a really good idea. As you can see, either of those would have tipped the balance significantly. We had a very tenuous lead, but it was enough. So we gain five points and then we can place the first Finca of the game. It goes right over there, and again, the game ends immediately after a player's turn once five of these regions have been completed. Overall, I think that was a pretty great turn for us, and it's now time for Blue to go. Now, they are pretty tempted to spend a donkey cart, but they also can look over here and see that if they went there, they would get four figs, and there is a five-of-a-kind tile out here now. Another thing that is tempting them is moving two spaces over here to get uh, three lemons. They have two lemons already, so that would get them to five, but they would also have three, which would let them take this. And the blue player is pretty incentivized to have this region get cleared, because that is five points that goes to the player who has the most question mark icons in front of them. And currently, that is the blue player. Although with this five out here, that could certainly change pretty quickly. Now, the problem with each of those farmer moves is it does not give the blue player any donkey carts. It was actually pretty impactful having them lose multiple donkey carts, considering they have so much stuff that they could potentially be delivering, and now they once again need to try and get those donkey carts back. I think if the lemon plan or the fig plan involved also gaining a donkey cart, it's very likely the blue player would go for it. This is a really hard turn for the blue player, but I think we're just going to have them actually spend some of their stuff. I really want to have them gain some more resources, but they really do have donkey cart problems. <laughs> that really did backfire on them. So they are going to do this, and they have decided to take this one right here. That requires them giving up three olives. And then they will also do this one right here, which requires three oranges. That gets them up to six, which is the maximum this donkey can carry. And then they can place these over here. They did want at least one three as they're working their way towards a set. They need a two and a six in order to actually complete that one. After that, we can reveal a couple new tiles. That is a one lemon and then a two olive. That is certainly something the blue player wants to see considering they do need a two, although they also want to see a six appear again. Well, blue is done, so now the red player can go. And they've decided to move this farmer. It will go one, two, three spots and then just give them a single almond. After that, it's our turn, and we have no goods, so we should definitely take some. Uh, over here, we could get three figs. We could get one fig, which is obviously worse. This one would get us three lemons, which is interesting. That would be enough to take this tile, but we can also see the red player has four lemons, so they could take that before we potentially do. Now, that being said, there's quite a few lemons out here. There is a double lemon there, a single, the three, and this one wants two oranges and three lemons. So getting three lemons is probably a good idea just in general, so I think we'll go for it. We'll move right over there. That does not get us a donkey cart, but that's fine. We are still working towards our next delivery anyway. After that, the blue player can go. 
and they are going to go two spaces and take three figs. All right, it's now the red player's turn, and they've decided to use one of their power tiles. This lets them do two movements over here on the windmill, one after another. They are going to start with this farmer, which goes one, two, three. That gives them a single grape, and then they could choose any of their farmers to go again, and they will move the same one. That will land here, getting them two oranges, and that will also get them one donkey cart. They did effectively spend two points to do that, but they felt like that was worth it to set themselves up for a pretty good next turn. Well, they are done, so now we can go. And we only have three goods, so let's definitely get some more and hopefully also pick up a donkey cart on the way. Although, looking out here, we don't have the ability to do that. This one would get us two olives. That would get us four figs. This would get us one fig. And then that one would get us uh, two almonds. But none of those options actually cross a donkey line. Out of all of these options, I think I like this one the best. We'll go one, two, three. That gets us two almonds, which is not bad to have. Uh, there are, I guess, just a couple of things that need almonds out here, but this does get us right next to a donkey cart option, and I think that was slightly better than getting some figs. I suppose getting a couple olives would be nice, but I like being here because next turn I could 100% get a donkey cart if we need to. If we did that action and then blew left to get some more oranges, maybe it's something they do, then we would be once again in a situation where we could not get a donkey cart on our next turn. So I think that was probably the slightly better move, and now it's time for the blue player to go. I can tell you what, they certainly would have done that if we had gone here, because they continue to really need donkey carts. They don't have the ability to get any right now, although I suppose they could use their double move. They could go there to get one grape, and then there to get a donkey cart and three oranges. You know, I think they are going to do that. Uh, this will give them the two moves, and yeah, they will go here to get one grape, and then they'll move one space forward, getting themselves three oranges and a much-coveted donkey. They are having a much harder time getting donkeys after losing all of those than they anticipated, so they're certainly regretting putting themselves in a position where they lost all of those donkeys. Either way, they're trying to do the best they can now, and they certainly have a bunch of fruit in front of themselves. That's finished their turn, so now Red can go. And they've decided to use this donkey cart in order to make a delivery for these two. That needs three lemons, which they have. And then they also have three almonds, which they need for this one. That got them six points. It doesn't put them very close to getting any sets. They have two sixes and two threes at this point. And now we can reveal this tile. That is a four. It could be any type, but they all have to be the same. And then this one is a five. Two lemons and three grapes. Well, it's now our turn again, and if we look over here, our options aren't amazing. <laughs> uh, this could get us one fig, that could also get us one fig, this could get us one olive, and that could get us one grape, but that also does get us a donkey cart, so I think that's going to be our plan. Let's go right over here. We take the grape and the donkey cart, and we're still doing some setup right over here. We don't have that many goods in front of us, but hopefully we can put together a good delivery relatively soon. That has finished our turn, so now the blue player can go. And they have a donkey cart and so many goods. I'm sure there are several ways they could spend this donkey cart well. After thinking it through, they are certainly going to spend this, and then they are going to take these two tiles. So that is going to be two olives, that is also going to be two lemons and two figs. That got them six points right there. And it also got them even closer to having a full set. All they need is a six to make that happen. Let's reveal some new tiles. There is a four of any kind. Oh, and there's a six. That one requires one of each type. Well, blue is done, so now red can go. And they've decided to move here. That will get them two olives, and it will also get them a donkey cart. After that, we can go, and I think let's take three lemons. That's pretty decent. We already have a bunch, but there are still quite a few in the supply because we appear to be the only person hoarding them at the moment. And we can see that red or blue could go here and take four from the supply, but there would still be four left. So I think this isn't too risky. The reason we're doing this is because, well, there's a few of these have four or five of the same type. So I figure lemons is just as good as any to cash those in. That's finished our turn, so now blue can go. And it looks like they 
are going to take this invitation. <laughs> They're going to move two spaces forward, and they will take four lemons of their own. It looks like, oh, I miscounted. There are just three left in the supply. Now, that would be a problem if somebody else landed over here, but the only way that could happen is by using one of the special ability tiles. It's possible Red might do that on their turn. I guess it is now their turn, so let's see if they do. After considering it, Red is actually going to do this. It is going to cost them two points at the end of the game, but they think it is worth it. They will use this Gust of Wind. That says they can take any of their farmers and move them to any one of these blades. They then take resources as normal, but they do not gain any donkeys for that. They've decided to move this farmer over there. That means Red needs to get uh, five lemons. There are just three here, so I guess it was silly of me relatively recently to say, we're fine taking lemons, I'm sure it won't be a problem, because yes, it's a problem. There are not enough in the supply, so that means everyone is going to lose lemons. Uh, Red loses one, we lose six, which is pretty bad, and then the blue player loses four, which they are also not happy about, and then after that, the red player now takes five lemons. That was pretty great for them, but again, they did spend a two-point bonus token to actually pull that off. Well, red is done, so we can go, and <laughs> our plans have been knocked back a bit. So let's look over here, and interestingly enough, with five of these farmers, if we moved one, we'd go one, two, three, four, five. That would get us three almonds, and we already have two, so that would bring us to five, which we could use to complete this one right over here, for example. I think that's probably going to be our best bet. We could also go here to get some figs, but I figure if we don't do this, then one of our opponents probably will. So let's jump on it. We will go one, two, three, four, five. We crossed the donkey line, so we now have two donkey carts in front of us. And then we, of course, get three almonds. We are done, so now the blue player can go. And they can see an opportunity to get a donkey cart, and they are absolutely going to take it. They will move this farmer four times. That's one, two, three, four. That gets them a donkey cart, and it also gets them three oranges. So that worked out pretty well for them overall, even though they did just lose a bunch of lemons. Blue is done, so now red can go. And they've decided to use this donkey cart. They can deliver up to six things, and they are going to go for this and that. So this is going to require two oranges, which they have. That also needs three lemons. And then this one needs one lemon. So they could spend that. They just got their six points. And that certainly helped their quest to try and complete one set. They do still need a two as well as a four to actually pull their first one off. Well, let's focus back over here. And even though we haven't completed any more regions in a while now, we've got a few regions that are quite low. We have, it looks like, three regions that have two tiles, and this region has just one tile left. Both of those revealed are twos. All right, it's now our turn, and I would like to use a donkey in order to do a delivery. We don't have the ability to do a full six-size delivery, but the fact that we have two donkeys means I think we can spend this one and then work towards another one. Now, we have these five almonds right here, and we could just take this five-point tile if we wanted. Another thing that we could do is take this four-point tile. Now, obviously, that is one less point. However, when we look over here, as we work towards our first set of one through six, we already have a five, and we do not have a four. If we took this four, then we would just need a three. Currently, there aren't any threes face up, but there are up to seven of them total, and we've seen four of them, so that's just a little over half, and we should hopefully see at least one or two more before the game actually ends. So I am tempted to go for that, especially considering by doing this, we then have four plus six, which is ten of those question marks, compared to the six of the red player and the nine down here of the blue player currently anyway. Blue could potentially take this five and then obviously take the lead. I mentioned that because, of course, there's just one tile left here if we take the four, and then this one gives five points to the player who actually has that. I imagine if we did this, we would likely be influencing the blue player to try and to take this five over here, which would put them in the lead again. There's a lot of butterfly effects going on. Uh, we, of course, could just take the one extra point, but I do like the idea of being just one tile away from one of these bonuses. I think we're going to do it. We're going to go for the four. That is going to be four of these, and I suppose suppose that does mean we're wasting two spots on that donkey. If we had two lemons, we could also deliver this. Now, looking over here, one, two, three, we could move on this turn. Instead of actually doing a delivery, I could change all of this and get one lemon, but we don't have the ability to easily get two. Although I suppose we could use our double move to try and maybe get something going 
I think we're just going to go with a slightly inefficient turn. We'll just cash these in, and I hope that's going to be worth it to us. Uh, all right, that has finished our lackluster delivery, and now it's time for Blue to go. They have one donkey cart and a ton of fruit in front of them, and it appears they are still not going to make a delivery. They are going to move two spaces forward and take one lemon. That is the last type of fruit that they did not have, so it appears they are working towards taking this. They could have taken it right now, but they would have had to use their minus one discount, which of course would cost them two points at the end of the game. Either way, they are yet again taking even more fruit, and that finishes their turn. So now red can go. Although before they take their turn, this really should be revealed. That should have technically happened before our turn. Oh, it's another six. It's also a six of a kind on the specific spot that gives five points to the player who has the most of that symbol. So that is a very interesting combination of tokens. Either way, the red player does now get to go. And they've decided to move this farmer. That's going to be one, two, three movement. And then when they stop, they will get two lemons. After that, it's now our turn again. And the number one thing that we want is a three, but there aren't any revealed just yet. Another thing we should probably prioritize, if possible, is getting more of these question marks. Honestly, pushing towards potentially taking this would be good, although <laughs> the blue player already does have four oranges. They were certainly planning on cashing in for this, but now that that's out there, it feels pretty likely they're just going to take that one on their next turn. I think for now, let's just get a grape. We move forward three spaces. That puts us one step away from getting another donkey. And we now have two grapes in front of us. That would be enough for half of this tile down here. And that also means next turn, we could move one space and potentially get a bunch of oranges as well as another donkey. And getting a bunch of oranges could help us towards something like this, for example, or just that, considering we already have the grapes. Either way, I think that's going to be what we do on our turn. So now the blue player can go, and they are definitely changing their plan. Again, they were certainly going to be taking this one, which needed one of each, but now they are going to spend this donkey, and then actually hold on a second. <laughs> they could do this. Or they could instead cross this line and get yet another donkey. There's quite a few donkeys in the supply. They can tell that none of their opponents are in a position to take either of these. And even though they have so many fruit, they are worried the red player might do that on their next turn, which means blue would once again be in a hard spot for actually getting donkeys. So I think they're actually going to hold off a little bit longer. It's kind of humorous just how much fruit blue has and how much they're putting off doing this. But yeah, they are going to move this farmer two spaces. That will get them two olives. And it will also get them another donkey. They're not even sure if they're going to use these olives or, <laughs> honestly, a lot of these fruit in general. But having two donkeys now means they could probably do a couple turns in a row of cash-ins. Well, that's finished Blue's turn, so now Red can take theirs. And they've decided to move this farmer there. They have three out of their four farmers on that one spot. There are three farmers there, so that's going to be three lemons. After that, it's time for us to go again, and it looks like our gambit paid off. Let's move one space. That will get us a donkey, and it will also get us four oranges. All right, now it's time for Blue's turn, and I will admit, they contemplated moving a farmer four spaces over there to get a couple lemons, but no, they are certainly going to cash in at least their oranges, because that is the thing that is most at risk for running out in the supply, and that would be pretty bad for them if they lost all of those. So they are going to use this donkey and then deliver all six of these oranges. That lets them take this, because it was six of a kind. They can place that right there, and now they have a full set. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So they take the top bonus tile, which is worth seven points to them at the end of the game. And then after that, we can look over here and see that this spot is empty. That means this bonus will activate, and it will give five points to the player who has the most of these question mark icons on their tiles. The blue player has 15 of those. We have 10, and the red player has 6, so blue definitely wins it. That will get them 5 more points. So overall, this was a bonkers turn for the blue player. That was 6 plus 7 plus 5, so 18 points overall. And then after that, we can move a Finca and put it right over there to show that that region is done. Remember, the game ends after a player's turn, where 5 regions are done in a 3-player game. All right, red is now up. And they've decided to move this farmer three spaces. That is going to get them one grape, and it puts them very close to getting another cart. After that, it's time for us to go, and we can either get one fig with either of these, or, huh, we could get two lemons with either of those. 
Two lemons is certainly not bad. There are a couple ways to potentially spend those, although we can see Red has a bunch of lemons, but they don't have a donkey cart. They do have this one, which is a max 10, so they could use this and not deliver the full 10. Obviously, the less you deliver, the less lucrative that is, but it does mean they could spend that just to do a delivery before one of us might do it. I think let's put the pressure on and move this farmer. That's going to be one, two, three, four, so that will get us two lemons. All right, the blue player can now take their turn, and they've decided they are going to move a farmer. This one is going to go one, two, three, and that will get them one fig. And now it's time for red to go. Now, they don't currently have a donkey cart, and they can tell that we are well positioned to take this and that on our turn, and they really want these tiles. The red player has a 1, a 3, a 5, and a 6, which means they want a 2 and a 4 to make a complete set to get this 6 bonus points. Because of that, they've decided they are going to use this tile right here. That lets them deliver up to 10 uh, goods, and unfortunately for them, they're only going to be delivering 6, which is the normal amount. They really wish they had a donkey cart right now, but ultimately they think this is worth it to get those tiles before we do. So they are going to deliver four lemons to take this one right here, and then they will deliver these two lemons to take that tile. These can go into their area, and just like I said, they now have a full set. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they will take this token, and that's worth six points to them at the end of the game. Of course, they did lose two endgame points by spending one of those actions. Red's turn is now done, so we can flip these up. That is a 1 and a 5. We are still not finding the 3 that we desperately need to actually finish our set. Although, as time goes on, that bonus gets a lot worse. It's now down to 5 from 7, although 5 extra points is still totally worth it. Now, at this moment, there are three regions that have just one tile left. And remember, the game ends once five of these regions go. So it's possible these could be the last tiles taken in the whole game. We might end the game never actually getting that three to complete this set. Now, one thing I am noticing when I look out here is the fact that when it comes to figs and almonds, we're in a pretty good position. We have four figs and almonds combined. Up there, the red player... Oh, I guess they also have four. And down here, the blue player has just two figs. They haven't actually delivered any almonds yet. I suppose it's possible they delivered almonds with one of these, but that does not count for the purpose of these Finca tiles. Now, the reason I am focusing on this is because if we completed this tile, we could get five points, which is great. That would also give us two more figs, and then this would go off, and I think odds are likely we'd get it, considering the tile that we'd have to take in order to make it happen. Now, the only issue with that plan is we need three oranges and two figs, and we currently don't have any figs. Fortunately, we could get two figs right now on this turn, and then that would set us up to deliver on our next turn. I think let's go for it. Let's send this farmer over there. That will get us the two figs that we would need to make that happen. We also have one almond, so we could potentially deliver both of those at the same time, unless, of course, this is taken by somebody else. The blue player does also have one almond over here, and they also have a donkey cart. Well, our turn is done, so now blue can take theirs. After considering their options, they are going to spend this token. That lets them do a delivery with one less thing than they need. They are going to go for this. That needs one of everything, but they don't currently have any oranges. So instead, they will just do one of everything else. And then they don't have another almond to actually take this, but they figured this was still going to be worth it to them. They are not in a great position to gain oranges at any time soon over here at the windmill. I suppose they could have used this gust of wind to go over there and get oranges, but they're going to stick with this turn. So they gained this. We can flip over a new tile, and it's another one. This will go down over there, giving them six more points, which is obviously great. And then this stack over here has just two tiles left in it. So does this one. So we've got a lot of low stacks. Blue is now done, so that means red can take their turn. And they've decided they will move here. That is going to get them three oranges, which means there is just one orange left in the supply, which is pretty precarious. And then they will also gain one donkey. Hold on a second, there's nowhere near enough oranges out here for that. I just realized there's a pile of oranges over there off to the left. These should be in the supply, so I take back what I said about there not being that many oranges in the supply. All right, it's now our turn again. We've got a couple of donkey carts in front of us, and let's go for the plan that we had on the last turn. Let's deliver five, and it's going to be these. That is going to finish two areas, it's true, but at the same time, I don't think we can really wait to try and find a three for that bonus. I think pushing forward is probably the right thing to do. Now let's start with this one here. 
that will cost us the almond. We can put that over there. And now this is going to be five points going to the person who has the most almond icons on all of their tiles. The red player has one, two, three, four. We have one, two, three. And the blue player has one. So this will go to the red player. After that, we can put this here, and then we can deliver this. That is three oranges, as well as two figs, and then this will go there. Now we can check this one. We add up the figs and the almonds. The red player has one, two, three, four, five. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the blue player has one, two, three. So that means we get this, and obviously it wasn't great giving points to the red player, but we also got points there, as well as six points in more tiles, so I think overall this was good. We can place this right over here to make sure we can tell that is our points, and now we can put another Finca there. This means just one more Finca is going to end the game, and this stack right over here has one tile, although currently nobody has two almonds to actually complete it. So our turn is done, and now the blue player can go. And they've decided to move this farmer. They will go one, two, three, and that will get them three figs. After that, the red player can go. And they've decided to cash in this donkey. They are just going to do a five delivery instead of six. This is going to be two oranges as well as two grapes. And then this one is a single olive that they do have. Now these are going to go into their area that does not complete another set for them, but it is still five points. And then both of these will flip, and we're still not seeing threes. Now we have three different regions with just one tile on them, so all three of these regions could immediately end the game. Well, red is done, so that means we can go, and we do have a uh, donkey cart. <laughs> Looking out at the board, it's interesting that almonds are so important. One, two, three, four out of the six stacks require almonds to be completed. And currently, nobody has any almonds in front of them. We don't have the ability to get almonds right now. It looks like all of us are kind of jumping over this almond spot. Although, I suppose, we have not used any of our special actions so far this game. We could use the Gust of Wind to move one farmer onto this almond spot. That would get us two, and that would be all that we would need to take this tile over here, although we are nowhere near in the running for actually gaining this bonus at the bottom. So I think instead, let's just get a fig. Maybe we could work towards taking this. Uh, we are not in a position to take the most lemons bonus either, but getting a six-point tile would be nice. So by going there, we get two figs, and we now have one, two, three, four different types. We are done, so that means blue can go. And they've decided to use this donkey, and they are going to do a five delivery. They have five figs, so that's five of a kind. They can take this and add it over here. They're actually well on their way to a second set. They just need a one and a two. There is a one out here, I suppose. And then that's going to finish their turn, and we can flip this up. And it's a three. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's been so long since we've seen one of those. Well, the red player can now take their turn. They don't have any donkeys, and they don't really have much in the way of goods either. And they've decided to move two spaces forward. That will get them one olive. And that's not a particularly impactful turn, but it slowly moves them in a direction they want. After that, we can go, and we could take this right now. We have a minus one uh, bonus ability. We haven't used any of these yet. We could use that for the third grape. That would be one full set, which would get us five extra points. We can see down here that the blue player does not have three, and they've already used their minus one. And the red player does have their minus one, but they only have one. So that means neither of our opponents can actually take this away from ourselves. But remember, the game ends right after a turn when one of these are taken. So if we think either of our opponents might do that, we should also keep that in mind. Although, neither of our opponents actually have donkey cards. So that means we are guaranteed to get another turn. So maybe we should hold off on using this right now. Now, I suppose one other thing we are potentially working towards is just taking this. Obviously, that is probably better, but I think for this turn, well, we, we can't actually get any grapes, and we're a few steps away from it. All of our farmers are in front of this one, and to get to that one, we could go twice, but then we've got a problem. This one goes one, two, three, and we have the same problem. This one goes one, two. Oh, that's interesting. If we jump there and take three lemons, and if the red player doesn't leave, then on our next turn, we could go one, two, three, and take that. I'm not sure if red would do that jump. It would kind of depend on if they saw it. Maybe that's what we should go for, actually. 
Another option, of course, is using these bonus tokens, although we haven't used any, and I kind of feel like trying not to, considering this is eight points for us at the end of the game, and both of our opponents have just one left, so we have six points on both of our opponents just from these bonus tokens. You know what? Let's try to do the two-turn play and see if the red player moves this. We will go one, two, and that is going to get us three lemons. I don't really think we're going to use all these lemons, but hey, we may as well have them. All right, that finished our turn, so now blue can go. And after considering their options, they are going to move this farmer one, two, three spaces. That will get them two olives, and it will also get them one donkey cart. Up to this moment, they didn't actually have one. That has finished their turn, which means the red player can go. And they've decided to move this farmer one, two, three spaces. That gets them a donkey cart as well as one grape. And now we get to go. Now, one thing we are really angling to do is to get this. We need one more grape in order to pull that off, though. Unfortunately, the red player just did what I was really hoping to do. <laughs> that was the jump that would have given us the grape that we needed. Now, I suppose we could just use our minus one. It seems a little bit silly to do that when we would be doing a delivery right now for just three out of the possible six. But that would get us three plus five, which would be eight points minus two for using this bonus. So that is still a six point play if we wanted to do it. That would also get us closer to finishing this region. There's a whole bunch of regions that could end the game, but if this one did, then I believe we'd be in a position to gain this five points. The only other real option I'm thinking about is using a different power to maybe do a gust of wind to go over here in order to get a couple of grapes. Um, I think if we try to continue on without using any of these, it's just going to take us a long time to get to anything we need. We could move this one two spaces to here, then two spaces to there, then three spaces over there, but that's three turns, whereas we could just get the uh, grapes right now, or again, we could use the minus one to cash those grapes in immediately. You know what? I think let's just cash them in. Let's spend this. That means we can deliver up to six, but we are only delivering two along with this, which gives us the minus one to the third one that we need. The fact that this completes a set for us, I think makes it worth it. It's a bummer that we don't have anything else to deliver, but this will flip that over. And if this is something that we could potentially do relatively easily, then we could maybe even deliver this with our max 10 on our next turn and then force the end of the game and also get this bonus. I think that's probably going to be worth it. Either way, this is the plan. So let's take this and then place it into our area. And we now finally have one full set of each of the six numbers. So we get this, and it's worth five points to us at the end of the game. And then we can end our turn by flipping this one up. And oh, okay, it is three figs as well as two olives. We have two figs right now. I was definitely hoping to see something that was more lemon-focused. But either way, we now have one, two, three, four regions with just a single tile on it. So lots of tiles could actually end the game at this point. Well, our turn is done, so now blue could go. And they really like the look of this tile. They know that they won't gain access to this if that is the region that scores, but they also like getting points where they can. And three out of these four tiles require almonds. And right now, we're all having a surprisingly hard time getting almonds. Although I suppose blue could go over there to get one almond, but they think that's going to take too many turns, and they're just going to move here and get three figs. They are done, which means the red player can go. They've decided to move here, which will get them two lemons. And now we are up, and unfortunately we are not in a position to do a delivery, even though we have quite a few lemons over here. I think what we should do is move this farmer. That is a two move, and it will get us three olives that we could potentially use to try and complete this, although it looks like the blue player might be about to complete it anyway. Either way, we can take these, and that also gets us one donkey cart. After that, the blue player can go, and they are in a position to take this, which would end the game. That would get them five points, but it would also give us five points. They can tell that we are winning this tile right here. So if they do that, realistically, the only one who's losing out in that exchange is the red player. But after looking at the overall game state, blue has decided they think it's worth it. They're going to spend their donkey. They will take this. That costs the three figs they just got. They can also spend these olives. That will be placed right over into their area. And then this will score. So again, we count up our grapes and our oranges. Down here, the blue player has one, two, three, four, then five, six. Up here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then, oh, 11. And then finally, red has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means we get this, and that is five more points to us. Then we place that last Finca onto the board, and now the blue player's turn is done, and the game is over.
This means the only thing we have left to do is count up our points. Again, every tile is worth the points listed on it, including these finger tiles and these bonuses, and every special action tile is worth two points. Let's start with the red player, and they have 35 points in their goods tiles. They have another two points here, which brings them to 37. Then this six on the 37 brings them up to 43. Then they have five more points on top of that, so they have a final score of 48. After that, we can score. We have 31 points in our good tiles, but then we also have three special action tokens, so that is six more points. So we add six to 31, which gets us to 37. After that, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, so we add that to 37, and we have a final score of 57. Lastly, we have the blue player, and they have 44 points just in their goods tiles. Then they have two more points here, which gets them to 46. Then they have five more points, which gets them to 51. And then when they add seven to that, they have a final score of 58. So it looks like it was a good idea for blue to end the game when they did, because they have one with 58. That's just one more point than us at 57. And unfortunately, the red player came in third with 48. And this completes a full three-player game of Finca. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play the game and actually going through this overall play. And I would like to ask that if at any point you saw a turn where you feel like we really should have done something differently, or if there's just some part of this game that jumps out to you, then please comment about it down below because I love to see that kind of feedback. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.